Carolina Hurricanes season came to an end Wednesday. We do not start the Stanley Cup Finals until Saturday. The Florida Panthers will sit around for not sitting around. I'm sure they're practicing nine days between games. That is not good for anybody. Uh, But the NHL was at the mercy of the Western Conference Finals and to an extent the NBA Finals, which has tons of days between games. There's only one. There's only two games that are separated by just one day off in the NBA Finals. The uh, games three and four will be played on, I believe it's Wednesday and Friday, in Miami. Everything else has it has two days off in between games. Incredible. There'll be a lot of rest in the NBA Finals, which is fine. NHL doesn't generally play that. Uh, anyway, we were hoping the Hurricanes could get there, but they did not. Got swept by the Florida Panthers in the closest sweep I have ever seen. But it was a sweep nonetheless. And how does Carolina go forward on this? I will say this. There's obviously no way that Jordan Stahl won't be part of this team next year. And if it was up to me, the second order of business of the uh, free agents this year is a no-brainer. Jesper Faust must be on this team. Let me bring in my friend Corey Lavalette, North State Journal, and The Athletic who joins us on the Adam Gold Show. Would you concur that Jesper Foss must be part of this group? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a kind of a no-brainer. It's not like he's going to break the bank and uh, maybe a little bit of a raise. I don't know if, you know, his playoff performance is going to make somebody do something stupid and give him a whole bunch of money. But, right. um, yeah, I mean, I think he's a good fit. It's The question becomes is, you know, where does Jordan Stahl fit in this lineup going forward? Does he slide into more of a fourth-line center role? Does he stay as a third-line center? And where does Jesper Fox fit if he's going to play alongside Jordan, which I think is what we should uh, assume will happen, at least in the regular season. Corey Lavalette is joining us here, and uh, you know, Corey is around the team uh, more than I am. Um, and still is falling into the trap of numbering the lines. If the head coach is listening, Corey, he's not going to be very happy. Um, yeah, Jordan, I mean, I, he's sort of the identity line. Stahl, Fost, Martinook, right, to what the Islanders have done with, you know, Clutterbuck, Sezikis, and Martin, and uh, Martin, right? An identity line that's actually good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Corey Lavalette, North State Journal and The Athletic at Corey Love on Twitter. Uh, assuming that, yeah, I don't think, I mean, I, you have to assume that Stahl's probably, you know, pretty close to half of what he got paid in the last 10 years, $6 million a year, right? Yeah, I think three or three and a half seems like it makes sense. I don't know if I, Tom Dundon's not an overly sentimental type when it comes to giving out contracts, so... Maybe somewhere else he gets a little more, but I think they get it done. I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem. You know, it's, uh, you know, he wants to be here. They want him here. Obviously, the coach, I don't know if the coach could go on without him. No. So uh, I I think it gets worked out pretty pretty easily. Uh, Odds that Max Pacioretty is back here on a one-year deal. I, I feel like that's probably going to happen. I mean, he hung around the team all season long, even after the second Achilles tear. Uh, the big question becomes, you know, what's the number at? And, you know, I've seen some of those prognosticators who try to guess what contracts mm-hmm. are going to be worth, and it's shown up in like the million and a half range. And if it's that much, then it's, you know, it's a no-brainer. That's pretty much the risk <laughs> you took on Andre Kasha last year, right? Right. Uh, knowing that, uh, and he did, that he could, uh, you know, be off the team in any in any second. So. Uh, I, there's no real harm in, in trying to do that and keeping him around, I don't think. Uh, you, I just don't know that you can rely on him to be a, a big addition. It's more anything you get out of him will be crazy. Corey Lavalette, North State Journal and The Athletic. All right, where do you feel like this team fell short of be, of winning any of the games against Florida, which all could have gone either way? I do think that Florida was the better team. But I think any of the games could have gone either way. Uh, where do they fall short? Uh, and is it as simple as they didn't have Svechnikov and Patchy ready? I mean, that's certainly part of it. I mean, you would have liked to have seen the power play come through in a couple opportunities when it didn't. Though I think overall the power play was okay in the in the playoffs. Yeah. It was, 
it, at times it was good, at times it wasn't. It, it didn't feel like it was ever the reason they lost, uh, unlike sometimes during the regular season. So, uh, you know, there were some opportunities there where they could have, you know, scored on the power play and they didn't. You know, Seth Jarvis hitting the post in game one yeah. comes to mind. That's not a, you know, a situation where you've done something wrong and it, and it didn't work out. It's just, you know, he gets a chance, he hits the post. He probably thinks about it for the off season and comes back and is better because of it. So I mean that that kind of jumps out to me. But certainly you miss Sveshnikov. You miss his physicality. I think more than anything uh, because that was definitely something they didn't have a whole lot of in the lineup. Corey Lavalette is with us here. Hurricanes. The real the the business for next year starts now. So if you were making a list of priorities for Don Waddell and company in this off season. We already talked about Stahl and Faust. What is priority one for you? I think it's you have to hammer out an extension with Sebastian Ajo. I don't think they're going to go into this season uh, with his contract expiring and let him potentially walk away for nothing. So um, I think that's like the Stahl deal. I think, you know, everyone wants to get worried about it because of what happened last time around with his contract. But, you know, I don't think he's looking at $10 million a year or anything mm-hmm. here. And given what he makes now, you know, he makes just shy of eight and a half. If he gets a million dollar raise, I, the, the, the bigger thing might be, you know, how long is the contract? Are the Hurricanes willing to commit to eight years? Does Sebastian even want to commit to eight years? Would he rather be a free agent again at 30? Um, so I think that's your, that's your number one thing is, is figuring that out. And then, you know, you have other guys on with one year left on your on their deals that you have to think about. You know, you've got to think about where, what's the future of the defense with Brady Shea and and Brett Pesci. Are you going to keep both of them this year and let them both walk to free agency, or try to sign one of them, or trade one of them? Or uh, there's a lot there's a lot that could be done here, especially with the amount of cap space they have. They they do have a, they're among the leaders in available cap space, and there are a lot of players who have who already have contracts for next year, so they are in a good spot. Except they're looking at the cap the following year when they have so much business that has to get done. Let me before we get to goaltending, Corey Lavalette is here. Let me let me address two quick things uh, that they don't have to do, but they probably should do, or at least try to do this off season. You mentioned Sebastian Ajo, and I agree. That is job one because I feel like he is the first piece that must be in place for you going forward. Jalen Chatfield is making a league minimum contract next season. I think we both agree that he can, he should be part of the defensive core going forward, whether it's in his current role as a third-pair defenseman or we've seen him play up, and he has been very effective playing up. Uh, would you like to see them sign him to a long-term contract now? Well, yeah, and I mean, that goes back to the whole idea of Brady Shea and Brett Pesci. If you're not going to keep both these guys and and thinking the way the Hurricanes think, you know, those are guys who are closing in on 30 now, and that's not something they generally like to do too much. Um, You know, is Jalen Chatfield even ready for a top-four role next year? So if you do decide to pull the trigger and let's say you trade Brett Pesci and um, I don't think anybody wants to see Brett go because he's a, been a big part of everything this team has done. And obviously he's a uh, really kind of a bedrock of their defensive efforts there. But, you know, you always have to think long-term now at the same time, he's only a year older than Jalen Chatfield. So um, I mean, you're younger rather or you're older than Jalen Chatfield. Right. So um you know, it's all going to come down to that. I, the, the good news on Jalen Chatfield is even if you do get him signed to an extension, it's not going to be $4 million or maybe even $3 million. You know, if you can get him signed now before he hits free agency, maybe uh, maybe there's a chance to lock him in at a, at a cheap deal. Oh, I think there there's every, every opportunity. He loves it here. He, this is the place he really got an opportunity to play. And I think... You and I probably agree there. There's some offensive upside with him, especially in the system that Rod Brindamore employs. Um, what what do you do with Seth Jarvis? Do you try to get ahead of it, like they didn't get a they, they didn't really do with Aho because um, because of the negotiation not working out? By the way, same agent 
Uh, Jerry Johansson is the agent for Sebastian Ajo and Seth Jarvis. Do you get ahead of Seth and try to go long term? You know, I asked him uh, just that. I said, you know, Co- you know, Kokinemi signed the big extension. Is that something you're interested in? And he, he actually said to me, we got to get Fishy signed first. So uh, <laughs> even, he's, uh, even within his own agency, he's, uh, he's, he's number two on the, on the to-do list for the offseason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, everyone's going to look at the numbers and say he took a step back this year. I think he took a huge step forward. I agree. Just um, – has became a really magnificent two-way player. Says he plans to get stronger so he doesn't get pushed around as much. You saw that re- little reverse hit he had on Radko Gudis yep. uh, in the Florida series. He's not afraid to throw the body and be physical and go to hard places. He's the kind of guy to me that should be a centerpiece of the organization going forward. And man, he's just 21, and I think just I think he's he's going to be a star in this league. And if you can find a way. To, uh, to to tie him down uh, now before he has that big breakout season that I think is coming. Um, that was, that could be huge for the future of uh, you know the Hurricanes cap situation and the franchise as a whole. Yeah, your 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 point is one I absolutely share in that the numbers didn't improve, but Seth improved greatly. I thought he was, you know, he wasn't their best forward in the postseason, but he might have been one of their best two or three forwards in the postseason just for the way he played and how he impacted the game. All right, would would you try to sign Martin Natchez? Would you try to just make him play a, a, a prove-it season, or would you take that contract and that value and try to parlay him into a legit number 2 center who could play uh, really good, heavy, top, mi- top six minutes uh, in your forward line? Yeah, I mean, I think the options are all there, like you said. I, I'm not sure that signing him will be a priority just because mm-hmm. he'll have arbitration rights. That makes things a little stickier because he'll have a little bit of leverage after next year. Um, so to me, I think that probably uh, the plan would be to let him play out this year and see where he's at. But to your point, he's never going to have higher value than he has right now because of the season he had and because of the – the number he has on his, you know, on his spreadsheet right now, $3 million. uh, That's a bargain for the hurricanes. Don't get me wrong, but that's also going to be a bargain for a team that uh, is in a cap crunch. That's like, well, maybe we can swap Mark, you know, player X that makes $6 million for nature at $3 million. Um, You know, you look around the league, you look at teams like Toronto that could be making a big change. If they said, you know, you know, we want to make William Nealander part of a package for Martin Natchez. You know, Natchez is a dynamic player. Uh, William Nealander is a point per game player. Um, but there's risk involved in all that. Obviously, there's not a, you know, there's not a contract beyond next year. But I, I love guys like Travis Konechny, and I don't know that center has to be the priority. I, I think you and I diverge on this yeah. a little bit on, on how good Yesterday Kokinemi is going to be. Um, I think he had a good half of the second year, and I think you give that one more shot. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think Martin Natchez's value is never going to be higher. So if, you're, if you don't see him in that same Seth Jarvis mold as this is a guy we have to go forward with and we can't win without, uh, you have to at least look around. I mean, they, looked, they used him last year and looked around. You know, the, the guy who carried the Panthers, uh, at least up front, into the Stanley Cup Finals was – you know, the guy that was Martin Natchez was dangled for. So, um, you know, we'll see what, what happens with, with Natchez. But a uh, good year for him. And if he does come back and plays, it's, it's on a great, it's on a yeah. great deal. Oh, it is. and that's, that's what and you and I both know the organization pretty well. They love value contracts, which is why Jalen Chatfield is going to be part of this team going forward. Uh, and honestly, why Martin Natchez was never going to move. Uh, unless he, it was in a blockbuster, and I don't think they'd move him now unless it's for in a blockbuster deal because, at the very least, Nature's going to be worth 60 points at $3 million per, and that is incredible value for that type of player. The first two third, the first three quarters of the season for Nature's were spectacular. It's the end of the regular season and the postseason that everybody is surprised at, 